apologies for the loss uh, in sound for that story. We'll bring it in our subsequent bulletins. But in our last story, six dangerous snakes have been harvested from residential settlements in Kumasi within the past three months. A six metre long Africa rock python is among the reptiles captured by the Kumasi Zoological Gardens. Nanayao Jima reports climate variation and filth could be factors causing migration of the snakes into human settlements. Here's his reports. Five men bring out the African giant python for examination at the Kumasi Zoo. It is a fully developed python, six meters tall, captured hatching its eggs at Bokrom in Kumasi. Dr. Paul Meizika from the Kumasi Zoo led the team. This period, I think we've had about uh, six calls. We've been able to attend to four of them. We've captured uh, the cobra. And then the rest that we've captured are African uh, rock pythons and then a royal python as well. Another python of similar size was captured at the construction site of the KJTR Market Redevelopment Project. This type of snake is non-venomous but can cause harm to humans. Professor Isaac Tete is a climate scientist at the Department of Environmental Science, Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology. The snake has always seen the prey. So uh, to incline the head in that angle of uh, 45 degrees, squirt the venom straight and into, go straight into your eyes to blindfold you and then it will attack you. Those that are non-venomous, such as the pythons, they resort to their physical power and they will constrict you, coil around you and stretch you apart. So the more you are breathing, the more they also stretch to ensure that they cause cessation to your breathing rhythms and, and they will kill you and they will swallow you. Snakes are known to live in water and forests, sometimes the deserts. Since they are cold-blooded, they regulate their own body temperature, basking in the sun for warmth and move to cooler locations to cool themselves down. Destruction of the environment by human activities has changed conditions in their habitation, hence migration of the snakes. Professor Tete explains. The irony is that this deforestation is going to emit so many greenhouse gases into the atmosphere. And what greenhouse gases do is that they trap heat which should escape into space, into our, ter into our territory. So the heat is retained. That heat is also being augmented by solar heating from space so that we have the warm climate surrounding the area of where the animals are. When it happens like that, then as I said, every organism has its tolerance range. So what is that is that with the ability to have the, uh, the, the thermoreceptors, it senses that there is danger. So I should migrate to a place that is safer. Scientists believe food source combined with environmental factors influence movement out of their natural habitats. Rodents, a feed for snakes, thrive in uncollected waste, hence the movement to city centers. Refuse. Professor Tete again. Without regular uh, dislodging of the refuse and transportation to landfill size to, to, to manage the waste very well, then insects will be there rodents will also be, be in the refuse. And when these um, animals, the snakes come, they are going to feed on the rodents. And once they get the rodents, they see that, oh, we have a better place to live. So they prefer living with us. Scientists like Professor Tete and Dr. Zieka are both proposing reversal of environmental destruction and proper waste management to help solve the problem. They should be prohibitive, strict, strictly enforced that nobody will touch preserved areas. Let's protect our environment, let's protect our wildlife, let's, we shouldn't destroy their habitat. And then coming back specifically to snakes, I would want to say that let's take waste management very, very seriously. From Kumase, for Joy News, Nanaya Ojima reporting.